The Hamatsa, long known as the Cannibal Dance, is the most important ceremony of the Kokwakiwak people of British Columbia. Thanks to popular scholars such as Franz Boas and Ruth Benedict, the Kokwakiwak, mistakenly called Kwakiutl, are one of the world's most famous indigenous groups. Central to all portraits of the Kwakwakiwak, the Hamatsa has come to represent this First Nations community and all the native people of the region. So how did this once secret and restricted dance become their most visible image? Despite scanty evidence of actual cannibalism, this now famous dance and its songs certainly have vivid imagery. The dramatically staged dance worried colonial authorities, so in 1885, Canada outlawed the Hamatsa, along with the ceremonial potlatch, in an effort to assimilate and convert native people. Why then did a dance prohibited by the government come to be claimed by the nation a century later? A legacy of public Kwakwakiwak performance, as well as ethnographic attention in books, museums, and film, has helped turn the Hamatsa into an emblem and a symbol. In the American Museum of Natural History in New York is a canoe filled with figures from all the Northwest Coast tribes. The central figure is a Hamatsa dancer. This mannequin represents more than a dance. It speaks to a history of complex relations between Kwakwakiwak people and scholars, relations of both collaboration and appropriation. For over a century, anthropologists removed images and objects from the coast. Now, to understand their impact, I had to retrace the movements of these materials and to ask how they affect the very native people they hope to represent. <laughs>